Well, the color guard has left the ice, and we're ready for hockey here this evening at the Hibbing Memorial Arena. Thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Zimmerman. Tonight, it's the Hopkins Royals from Hopkins, Minnesota, down in the Twin Cities to square off against the Hibbing High School Blue Jackets. The Blue Jackets suffering their first defeat just recently to the, the hands of the Dino Hornets, looking to rebound now. This ought to be a dandy hockey game tonight. The uh, Hopkins Royals are an excellent hockey team. They come in with a record of 5-3, and three, but they are 3-0 and oh in the Lake Conference. Blue Jackets, of course, undefeated in conference play, suffering their first defeat at the hands of the Dino Hornets in Edina the other night. So uh, this ought to be a dandy. Hibbing needs to rebound quickly to starting lineups for Hibbing. In goal tonight, number one, Rich Jacklin. At the defense, number two, Cal Huseman. And number four, Joey Gosted. Centering the line will be John Rue with Andy O'Brien and Paul Girardi at the wings. For the Hopkins Royals, it'll be in goal number 35, Dan Keeley. At the defense will be number two, Todd Bear. And number eight, Dan McGannon. Centering the first line for the Royals will be Jason Schneider. His wings will be Kurt Damon, Damon and Todd Dvorak. So we're just about ready now as both teams break their huddles. Sportsmanship Song Course, we're without the band tonight as they are in sunny, warm, beautiful, luscious, great, tremendous Hawaii, where I'd love to be right now, but unfortunately, I'm in the tundra, or we may rename this place to Igloo, the way it's been so cold out lately. There's the drop of the puck, and Hopkins Rose cleared right on Jacqueline right away. That was number two, Bear, with that long drive. Held in at the point by McGannon. And now the Jackets break at the center. Here comes number seven, Johnny Rue, on a break. Takes a shot to goal! What a play! Coming down the near side, that was Johnny Rue. Andy O'Brien was breaking on the far side, a two-on-one for the Jackets. And quickly, just 16 seconds into this hockey game, the Blue Jackets are on the board, one to nothing. John Rue. The assist on that goal will believe go to Girardi. Jackets quickly into Hopkins goal in his own. Now Hopkins comes back to center ice. That's Kurt Damon. Girardi gets the only assist at 16 seconds, hipping with the first goal of the game. And they're all quickly one to nothing. Now a play in the hitting zone. Behind the hitting net, that's Joe Gosted. And Rue back ends it out of the zone, picking it up in center race is Lindsey Holmbeck. He centers it in, now kicked out ahead by number 11 for the Blue Jackets. That's Mike Sanborn on. Now it's bounced out to center ice by Wollers. Wollers, Terrell, and Sanborn on for the Jackets at the defense. Gosted and number 15, Tony Pescuzzi. Now Gosted will get off the ice. And we have an offside call on the Blue Jackets. Number 12, Steve Stavnis out to join Pescuzzi on the second line. This kind of a makeshift line wasn't the way it was intended to be, but Sanborn was going to center a fourth line. He's now playing right wing on the second line with Terrell and Wollers. After the faceoff, puck was in Hopkins' zone, stolen away by Sanborn. He's dumped, though. Behind the net is Wollers. Wollers comes around the front, poke checked away now. There's a big hit over there by Terrell. Now carried in by Pescuzzi. Pescuzzi goes to the near corner, ridden off the puck and over his Applegate, trying to get it up ahead. Held in nicely by Stavnis. Back behind the nets, Vance Barron. He clears it up ahead, and now it's going to be held in again by Wollers at the blue line. Wollers with a nice move. Comes in close. Slides it up. Just goes wide of the net. Now coming out behind is Terrell. His centering pass is cleared away. There's a quick shot by Stavnis again. Coming over to the near side to Pascuzzi, who tries to back in. And now it's almost dumped out of the zone and finally does come out of the zone. Silvernagel clears it. Now here comes Terrell as the Royals change lines. Terrell backhands a pass to Wollers. Wollers coming in front. Right there was John Schwartz, but he couldn't get a hold of it as he was in too far. Back out to the point, Gosted up ahead to Schwartz. Schwartz sliding through the slot. Over on the near boards now, comes out with it. Poke checked away nicely by Vance Barron. But Schwartz continues to hold on. Now it's number 17, Voss. Oh, excuse me, not Voss. That's Doug Terrell. Oh, a quick shot is wide up over the net. 
And it comes out to center ice to Gostad, who backhands it over to Doug Terrell. Now it's cleared in the zone by Tom Sullivan. Schwartz chases and now it's dumped all the way down. We'll have an icing on the Hopkins Royals as they've been pinned up in their own zone since the beginning of the game. So we're ready for the faceoff now to the left of goaltender Dan Keeley. To take this faceoff is Doug Terrell. Terrell, Schwartz, and Sullivan on now for the Jackets. Hardy and Gosted at the defense. Now it's cleared on behind the net. That's Sullivan backhanding it behind the net. Takes a big hit. Picked up though by Terrell. Doug Terrell can't do anything. That's just laying in the slot. Finally picked up trying to backhand it out of the zone was John Voss, but he couldn't do so. Now the Jackets are set. Now it's back out, and Lindsey Holmbeck tries to clear it. Held in on the far boards by the Jackets. Now it comes out, and that's number 16, Gables, finally clearing it to center, but back is Gostad. Gets it over to Tom Sullivan. He just bats it in the Royal Zone, and the Jackets will change on the fly. Long centering pass up ahead for Kurt Damon. Damon, the puck is knocked off his stick by Girardi, but now it's intercepted, shot back in, back to Chase will be Huseman, along with Pescuzzi. Now coming right out of the corner with that was number five, Jason Schneider with a shot that Jacqueline turned wide, now the Jack is trying to clear it out, held in nicely by Dvorak, but picked up now by number six, Andy O'Brien. O'Brien over to the middle boards, and here there comes Girardi. Long pass and ice. This will be an icing. No, he's waving it off. Okay. Did hit a stick. One official didn't see the wave off until the last minute. Almost had an icing call. Now the Royals try to break up along the boards. Nobody home. And back to clear it into the zone is Huseman. Jackets. Very excellent forechecking here early as these Hopkins Royals can't get untracked. And that's going to be an icing call on the Royals as the puck goes all the way down the Jacket zone. Hopkins Royals arrived in town yesterday, so uh, long bus ride can't be affecting them. Maybe a little bit too much play in the pool over in Eveleth, but uh, on for the Jackets now. I can't see his number at the face of, but I believe it's Doug. It's Steve Terrell. Chad, uh, no, it's not Walters. It's Terrell, Sanborn, and Wollers with Hardy and Stavness at the points. There, it's finally cleared off front. Terrell takes a shot. That was Oh, and then just decks his own player. Number 11, Sanborn got decked by, by uh, Terrell. Now the Jackets control in the zone. And two Jackets, Terrell knocks uh, Stavnis down again for Sanborn. Sanborn's getting nailed by Terrell. There's a quick shot that's cleared aside by Keeley. Jackets putting on tremendous pressure here early. Now it comes up to the point. Quick shot from Stavnis goes up over the net, and it's off the wall. And the faceoff comes outside the Jacket zone. On uh, now for the Jackets, Doug Terrell, Tom Sullivan, and John Schwartz. Cal Huseman and Joey Gosted at the defense. Buck comes back into the Blue Jacket zone, back to Chase's Gosted. Tips it over to Huseman, a little bit wide, but Sullivan manages, almost picks up. Now it comes out to center, now Steve Terrell, Doug Terrell will pick it up. Over to Schwartz. Schwartz tries to drop pass back to Terrell. He goes and gets it. Now it comes free, here comes Gosted skating in. Quick shot, big save by Keeley. Now a puck is knocked down in front as there are plenty of players. Right now a quick shot that gets through by Usman. Again turned aside by Keeley and now cleared all the way down again. And we'll have another icing call with 9.25 left in the first period. And the Hopkins Royals leading, or excuse me, Hopkins Royals trailing the Hibbing Blue Jackets one to nothing. That quick goal from John Rue with an assist to Girardi early in the hockey game. 16 seconds in and the Jackets are on top and they've put on intense pressure here. Now Kasner's on with Sunball, Terrell, Troy Della, and the other point man is number 14, Pete Wollers. So Bill Olsen really mixing it up. There's another shot that goes high off the 
wall behind the net and they'll come outside the Hopkins zone. Hopkins Royals in blue hitting Blue Jack. It's in white if you're watching. We hope you're watching. And cleared into the zone by the Blue Jackets. Hopkins wearing the hockey pants, the full leg pants. Uh, and talking to one of the players earlier uh, this evening before they came out on the ice, he said he didn't like them at all, but he also said he didn't have any say in the matter, and therefore that's he has to wear them. Now picked up down in the corner by Dvorak. He's ridden around behind the net. Puck comes out in front, cleared away by Steve Terrell. Now he battles with Hopkins playing in front. Now comes back to the point. A quick shot by number four. Hit a few sticks. That shot was by Lindsey Holmbeck. And Jacqueline got his stick out. There's a nice sliding block in front by Huseman, I believe. It's not Huseman, that's Sunval, and the puck comes all the way down the ice into the Hopkins zone. Now Holmbeck will control on the near boards. Brings it out, tries to get it up ahead to Damon. Can't do so. Now pass in front is intercepted by Damon. Held in the zone by Andy O'Brien. Now they try to clear it out. Still held in by the Jackets by Stavnis as they are really putting on the pressure. Now the Royals come back and just flip it down on goal and they'll make a change. And now back to get it for the Jackets is number 15, Pescuzzi. <laughs> Girardi intercepts as Rue knocked the pass down. Girardi and Rue, two on two. Quick shot by Rue and a big stop by the goaltender. No whistle. So Girardi takes a swipe at goaltender Keeley. There's a face-off, quick shot by Woolers. Saved again by Keeley. And we'll have a face-off again to the left of Dan Keeley. He's been busy so far in his first period. But officially we have five saves for Keeley already here in the period as the Jackets control along the far boards. That's Steve Terrell. A bring out is Gosted. Puck comes in front again, just laying loose in the slot. Now knocked down by Sanborn and finally cleared to center, but the Jackets come back in. That's brought outside now as there was a delayed offside as Sanborn was caught in the zone. Sanborn battles at the blue line and almost knocked down by a big number eight, Dan McGannon. That's a big young man. they got some big kids on this team. Now Sanborn was in the zone and will have an offside. Seven twenty-five to play, one nothing. Hibbing leading on a quick goal by John Rue, just sixteen seconds into the hockey game. After the second period, we'll be talking with Hibbing Community College hockey coach Frank Catani. So stay tuned for that one. That's coming up after the second period. Now, quickly fired in the zone by Pascuzzi. Puck goes behind the Royals' net. In to chase it is Sullivan. He hammers. Hopkins play along the boards, goes out to Huseman. Huseman with a shot, kicked out by Keeley again. Sullivan in behind the net. Kicks it free, now comes rolling into the crease and Keeley falls on it. Now a little push from Tom Sullivan as he skates out of the uh, fracas. And we'll have a face off this time to the right of Keeley. Keeley's been extremely busy. If they're not careful, Keeley may be suing his defense for non-support here as they haven't given him any help in clearing the puck. When they do clear it, it's a uh, nine times out of 10 bit of icing. Now Dougie Terrell behind the net, skates it out, looking for Schwartz, gets it over towards Schwartz, but he's tied up. Huseman coming in from the point, takes a quick shot that goes through the crease. Now over to try to hold it in and do so nicely was Tony, uh, Tom Pescuzzi. Now into Schwartz, Schwartz takes Buck behind the net, tried to center, couldn't do so, and an open wing as Huseman came in. And back quickly now is Pescuzzi to cover. And the jacket's cleared up and we have a whistle. And we're going to have a penalty, I believe, on number 20 for the Royals. That'll be Mike Dalton. Dalton for tripping. Number 20, Mike Dalton, the tripping penalty. Time of that penalty. 8-14. Now the puck comes back into the jagged zone as Hopkins clears it down. 
Picking it up is Joey Gostad. Now dumps it back behind his own net. Gets by uh, Steve Terrell. Now he controls, gets it back over to Gostad. And here come the Jackets. Two men in for checking. Quick pass out to Johnny Schwartz. As Schwartz, Wollers, and Girardi out for the Jackets with Gostad and Terrell playing the points. Held in by Joey Gostad. Now the puck rolls behind the net. And back to pick it up is Schwartz. Gets it over to the far side of Girardi. Now back to the point to Terrell. Over to Girardi as Wollers goes down in the slot. Now a nice pass across to Schwartz. He can't quite control it as it was a, a little bit behind him. He just dumps it back in the corner to Wollers. Wollers back to Gostad. Gostad winds and shoots. Oh, tipped in front by Wollers. Off his skate, goes wide. Schwartz controls. Jackets on the power play for 56 more seconds. Over to Terrell, now down in the slot to Girardi. Back up to Gostad. Gostad winds to the point. Shot goes wide. Almost tipped by Wallers, but he couldn't get a stick on it. Now in front to Wallers. In is Gostad. Big save by Keeley. Two of them. And the puck comes off Girardi's stick. Now on for the Jackets is Andy O'Brien. Oh, and the puck comes out of the zone. And this will be a break for number 14, Kurt Damon. But it comes off his stick rolls back into the Hopkins zone. And now Wallers will control and fire it into the zone. And the Jackets will change. Oh, puck came off at a crazy angle. Could have been trouble. Now back to the point to Stavnis. Stavnis and Hardy. Oh, is it through the slot as Doug Steve Terrell, Doug Terrell, excuse me, was coming in. And now cleared all the way down right on Jacqueline. He hasn't made many saves. The penalty's almost up. Two seconds left in the penalty. So the Hopkins Royals have killed this one off. It's Lindsey Holmbeck. And he dumps it into the jacket zone and pushed aside by Jacqueline. And Hardy's back to get it. And now a nice passing by the Jackets as they get it up to center ice to Doug Terrell, but he can't control, comes back in the Jackets zone. Now Hardy back over to Stavnis. Behind his back to Doug Terrell. They pile up on the near boards and we'll have a whistle. 4.07 left in this first period. one nothing Hibbing getting the quick goal just 16 seconds in and things have settled down now as Hopkins starts to put a little pressure on the Jackets. First uh, half of the period, it was all jackets. Now Hopkins starting to exert a little bit more pressure. Current side of the uh, arena is uh, fairly full. The student side, of course, with not too many from Hopkins making the trip up. Not very full over there. The hibbing section is spare. And we're missing the band, of course. So there's a quick shot from the corner. That shot was from Chad Walters. Went wide. Now the, Jack, uh, the Hopkins Royals clear it out. But back is Steve Terrell. Wheels and deals out to center ice to Walters. Oh, and he can't control as they tie it up. Now he kicks it ahead. And the Hopkins Royals clear back in as dumped was Walters. Now Wallers and Huseman behind their own net. Wallers tiptoes out to center now with Doug Terrell, Steve Terrell. And the Troll brothers mixed up. There's Andy O'Brien on, holding at the point. He's pulled down. No call will be coming up. And the Hopkins Royals will break it out as the Jackets make a change. Out to center ice comes Mark Passel. And he dumps it in. Now the Hopkins Royals will change up. Gostad clears it out to the point. Held in nicely by number four, Lindsey Holmbeck. Now it comes out in front. That's John Rue. And here come the Jackets back to center ice. Andy O'Brien to Rue. Two on one with Girardi. Gets it ahead to Girardi, who puts a shot up. Oh, big stop by Keeley as he made a great stop. He laid in his crease, stayed in there. Now with the puck is Rue. Rue walks in. Oh, shot high off of the glove. No, it didn't get the glove of Keeley. Now we're going to have a little battle between the officials, and the official will say it hit Keeley's glove, hitting off the walls. So the faceoff will come with 2.38 left in this first period to the left of a busy goaltender, Dan Keeley. Keeley's got to have somewhere in the area of 10 stops right now. Well, 10, that is 10 stops unofficially for Keeley. Six for Richie Jacklin. None of the uh, very tough variety. Actually, uh, Jacklin's made one uh, fairly tough save so far in his first period. Johnny Schwartz with a shot that's... Deflected, oh, shot in front that deflects it. Oh, we have an injured jacket, I think. No, he's getting up now. It's Tom Sullivan. He hit the net hard, clearing it back into the slot. Now coming out for the Royals 
is number two, Todd Bear. Bear over to Dahman. He can't control, and now big pile up, three jackets and, and three jackets and Bear go down in the jacket zone, comes out to center ice. Now tip back in off the skates of Pescuzzi. Over to cover is Schwartz. Now the puck goes behind the jacket net. Big hit over there on Schwartz by Dvorak. Puck comes around to the near boards. Tom Sullivan chases, can't get to it. A big shot by McGannon goes wide. And all the way back into the Hopkins zone. Under two minutes now left in this first period. A very fast, hard checking first period. And now the puck is chipped back out to center ice. Wohler's on the fly. He knocks it down, but it's picked up by number 10, Vance Barron. And he dumps it into the jacket zone. Oh, Steve Trill out to center to Wollers. He can't control it. Ball bounces off of Wollers, but back to pick it up was Lindsey Holmbeck. Now Huseman intercepts at center ice, brings it into the zone. Oh, serves it through the crease to Sanborn. He couldn't get a stick on it, and back come the Royals to center. Dumped in now, and quickly chasing that puck is Brian Applegate, number seven. He controls in the near boards. But Steve Terrell picks it up, and out comes Wollers. Terrell and Wollers on a break, and Terrell a wide and bounce it off of number four, Holmbeck. And now picked up by Silvernagel. He's knocked flying. I think we're going to have a penalty? No. Just the referee was just holding the top of the boards. He thought he might have to jump. Now along the near boards, they try to tie it up. Girardi picks it up, though. Nobody at the point as the Jackets change defensemen. Now Hardy is back out the point. And that's Andy O'Brien back to the point to Stavnis. Shot right on Keeley, and he'll dive out on top of it with 39 seconds left in this first period. And the score is Hibbing 1, Hopkins nothing. Now on for the uh, Royals, Mike Dalton to take this face off against John Rue. Rue controls, but in the slot, it's intercepted by number 17, John Voss. He comes in, controls in the jacket zone, now dumps it back, intercepted by Rue, and he just clears it out the center. Big hitting going on over here. These Hopkins Royals are big kids, and they like to lay on the body. And now we have a puck out of play, and I think one of these Sheiks has a puck over there. I don't know if they've seen the Sheiks and Hopkins before, but uh, it's going to be a new experience for him. Mike Dalton again to face off against John Rue in center ice. 21 seconds left here in the first period. 1 nothing Hibbing lead. And the puck will roll back into the Hopkins zone. Wide of the net and back to pick it up is Bear. Now over for Voss. He's ridden into the boards. Nine seconds now, and they will try to tie it up. That's Voss falling on the puck along the near board, or far boards, and it was seven seconds left. Ball of a faceoff to the left of the goaltender, Dan Keeley. Pretty quiet crowd here tonight. Is now on for this faceoff. Will come number 19, Steve Terrell. As his line mates will be his brother, Doug. And now another jacket comes on, and that'll be number seven, Rue, on the point. Rue and Gosted at the points, Girardi, Stephen, Doug Terrell. <laughs> Steve Terrell waiting for everybody to get set. Now moves in for this faceoff, and it's right off to the right, left of goaltender, all the way down. Will bounce on Jacqueline. He'll clear it off to the boards, and that's the buzzer. At the end of the first period, giving one, Hopkins nothing. Fifteen saves for Keeley in that first period. Jacqueline had five. One nothing Hibbing at the end of one. Second period action coming right up. Well, the Blue Jackets break their huddle, leading one to nothing. 16 seconds of the first period, John Rue from Paul Girardi. 
gave the Jackets that one nothing lead. No scoring throughout the rest of the period. Only one penalty in the period at the 8.24 mark. Hopkins uh, Royals, Mike Dalton went off for tripping. No damage done, obviously. And so we'll start the second period, one nothing. Both teams at full strength. In that first period, Keeley had 15 stops, Jacqueline with five. Starting this period for the Jackets, Rue, Girardi, and O'Brien with Gostad and Huseman on defense for the Royals to start this period. Schneider, Damon, and Dvorak, the front line with McGannon and Bear on the defense. Keeley, the goaltender, and Jacqueline in goal for Hibbing. They drop the puck and we're ready to under play again in the second period. And that's McGannon clearing it down. It's tipped at center ice all the way down. Played aside by Jacqueline over to Huseman. Huseman up along near boards, knocked down by Girardi. He can't clear. Now he turns and just dumps it out to center ice. Over to pick it up is Dvorak. Dvorak dumps it back in the hitting zone. Tipped by Gosted right on goal. Then he takes it back behind his own net. Joe Gosted starts out. Knocked away by Dvorak. He controls. Gets it in front. A quick shot. Jacqueline with the big save as that shot was off the stick of Kurt Damon. And a big stop for Jacqueline. That's the first time he's really been tested in this hockey game. Faceoff comes to the left of Rich Jacklin as he got the start this evening over Jim Monticelli. Monticelli's played a majority of the game, so he's getting a little break tonight. Steve Terrell. Oh, a quick shot again and held on by Jacklin. That quick shot, I believe, came off the stick of Jason Schneider. Rollers, Terrell, and... Scott Sunball on for the Jackets. Schneider, Damon, and Dvorak still on for the Royals. That is Sunball clearing it behind his net to Terrell. He dumps it up the near boards, held in at the point by Bear. Now it comes out to center ice and McGannon controls. McGannon tries to get a pass over to Dvorak, but it's intercepted by Terrell. Now here comes number five, Schneider. Gets it over, and a quick shot that goes wide. That shot from Damon. Over on the far boards, they fight for it. Damon walks in, takes a shot that goes wide. Now back out to the point, Bear, shot tipped in front by Damon, kicked aside by Jacqueline, as the Royals come out steaming here in the second half, second period. And that was dumped out to center ice and McGannon with the puck. Royals should be looking for the change, here it is. As on the ice now, as the Jackets skate out to center ice, is Griff Gingle, Silvernagle, and Applegate. Griff Gingle, number 11. Oh, wait on goal. Quickly, it was Doug Terrell, but he was knocked away by Keeley. Now it's still in the uh, Royal Zone. Now coming out to center ice with it is number two, Bear. He's been on for quite a while. Brought in the zone, held in. Quick shot by Silvernagle's. Cleared out by Jacqueline. Back out to the point. Quick shot by Vance Barron, comes out to center ice, and on a break comes Tom Sullivan, one on two. Drop pass, nobody home, Barron can't clear. Tipped over, there's a shot by Schwartz and held nicely by Keeley as Schwartz got a little wrist shot off as the Jackets broke out of their own zone well there. And we'll have a change of lines now for the Hopkins Royals. Holmbeck and Eberhard on at the defense. Mike Dalton, Steve Gables, and John Voss on as the front line. Doug Terrell, John Schwartz, and Dan Kasner on for the Jackets with Hardy and Gosted at the defense. Face off to the left of goaltender Keeley now. Buck is dropped. Schwartz moves in for a shot. Dumped in front and clearing it comes Voss. Jim Voss coming up to center ice. And dumps it into the uh, hipping zone. Back to chases Gosted. Over to the near boards. Hardy picks it up and he starts out to center. Has a head to Schwartz. Schwartz sidesteps now kicks it ahead. Now into the skates of number four, Holmbeck. Held in nicely by Terrell. Behind the Hopkins net. Now comes out to the near side, and Gosted will control. Backhand shot by... That was the backhand shot by Kasner, and he holds on. Does Dan Keeley, and he'll have a faceoff again to the left of Keeley. 12-27 left in this second period. 
one nothing. Having we make continues to lead this hockey game. John Rue, Andy O'Brien, and Paul Girardio for the Jackets with Pascuzzi and Houston at the defense. Now cleared behind his net by Todd Bear. Puck rolls off his stick. Girardi in his dump behind the net. Falls on the puck. It comes free. And here come the Royals out to center ice. This is Jason Schneider. Over here, Dvorak. Dvorak carries in the hitting zone. Falls down. Manages to control the puck nicely. Nice skate. Oh, and hammered. We're going to have a penalty on John Rue, I believe, for elbowing. As Schneider goes down. And it's a penalty at the 2.56 mark of this second period. John Rue will go for elbowing. So now the Hopkins Royals go on the power play. Andy O'Brien tries to control off to the side of his goal, picked up by the Royals. Stared out to the slot. That's Bear. Bear over to Schneider. Schneider almost loses a puck. Now does. Girardi tries to tip it out and does. It's at the blue line. It comes outside the blue line. Big hit. Oh, big hits put on all over the ice. Houston and Girardi both got hits. Over here is Tom Piscuzzi out at center ice, and he'll clear it down to the Hopkins blue line. Big Dan again, and it's intercepted by Girardi. Here comes Girardi into the zone. One on two, and it's poked off his stick. Rolls behind the net. Girardi continues to control. Tries to get back to the point. Now the Jackets quickly break back as Hopkins breaks out of their zone. And knocked out at the blue line, and that's Cal Huseman knocking it all the way into the Royals' zone. These Hopkins uh, Royals like to hit out there. They have hit the Blue Jackets all over the ice. Now coming up at the end of this period, giving Community College coach Frank Catani will join us for a quick interview. Nice block by Stavnis, and the puck goes out of zone. Now Stavnis poking it away from Damon. Now Damon controls in center ice. Uh, head to Dvorak, two on one. But back quickly are the Jackets at Stavnis and Steve Terrell and whole game coming back quickly. Now having in that box. Quick shot from the point is blocked. It's McGann and telegraphed that shot. Took a long time to get it off and Wohlers blocked it. Now over in the far boards, back out to the point and he can't hold it in. That's number four, Lindsey Holmbeck. And now knocked off his stick by Steve Terrell and back into the Royal zone. Terrell takes Holmbeck back, and Keeley knocks it away from his own player. And now over to pick it up is Brian Applegate. And Applegate rushes it out to center. Now a big hit by Hardy as he just, he just got a piece of uh, Applegate and took him down. Enough to get him out the puck. Applegate looks like he might have hurt his shoulder as he did hit the boards. He comes off gingerly. Now the puck at the Hopkins uh, blue line. Gibbing back at full strength now. As into the zone come the Royals. There's a quick backhand shot that's deflected wide by Griff Gingle. And it's cleared out of the zone and down into the Hopkins zone. Goalie plays it. Now back behind his own net, that's Wohlers. Or behind the Hopkins, that was Wohlers trying to control. And now it comes out on the far boards. Out to center ice came number nine, Silvernagel, but he's knocked off the puck nicely. And now dumped in by the number four, Holmbeck, for the Royals. Gibbing effectively killing off that penalty and still keep the lead, one nothing. Now Johnny Schwartz, just a little touch pass out to Doug Terrell. Doug Terrell coming along the near boards into the Hopkins zone, tries to drop pass, gets it back to Schwartz. Nobody in the slot at all, and the puck goes behind the net to number 17, John Voss. And Voss will skate it out. He's hooked and spun around, no call, and Voss continues to hold on to the puck out to center ice. Now a hit by Huseman, but Voss gets around him. Voss, not a, not superb speed, but just really, really in control of himself, and uh, brought that puck all the way down the ice. Now Gostad controls and takes it in behind his own net. He'll set things up over to Schwartz. Schwartz dumps it out to center, but Steve, Doug Terrell can't control, and the Jacket's on the change now. Into the zone comes Holmbeck. Oh, excuse me, that's number 41, Tim Gallagher, on the ice for the first time. Now Girardi comes into the zone. Quick shot, low, and kicked out nicely by Keeley. Up and down the ice, these two teams are going now. Not a lot of stoppages of play, as that's number five, Scott Sunval, and number 15, Pescuzzi. Now Girardi takes the puck. Tries to get it back over to Rue. Now down to Girardi. He can't control, and out to center ice. 
Jim Gallagher, but it's cleared right back in, held in at the point, actually. Now it's cleared to center ice. And back to pick it up for the Jackets is Hardy, and we'll have an icing call with 8.09 left in this second period, and Hibbing maintaining that one to nothing lead. On for the Jackets now is Dan Kasner, along with Troy Dilla and Mike Sanborn. This is the Hibbing fourth line out there now. Against the top line of Schneider, Damon, and Dvorak for the uh, Royals. Now held in by the Jackets. Backhand shot is blocked, and out to center ice comes Schneider. Gets it over to Damon. Damon looking for Dvorak, knocked down nicely in front by Wohlers. And now the Jackets try to clear it, but cannot get it out. Oh, slot right through the shot, right through the slot. Nobody home. Comes around to the far boards now. Over to check is Sanborn. And out the center now comes Wollers on a rush with Dilla on the near side. Wollers takes it all the way down to the zone. Look for a face off here now. Oh, being dumped and held on. No call. I can't. Now we're going to get a call. We finally get the call. It took him a while. The fans got upset. And I think he's going to take them both off now. I don't quite understand, but we'll have penalties. Time of those penalties, 7 minutes and 26 seconds. 36 seconds. 7.36. They're both going. Number two for Hopkins, Todd Bear. And I didn't see who went in for him. Bear for holding. Pete Wohler is for him is sent to the sin bin. And he's called for, I don't understand those calls at all. They evidently were holding each other. Not a real uh, effective call held in at the point by Stavnis. A quick shot. Nice stop by Keeley as he was screened and he holds on. Back to play now, controlling in his own zone. That's Silvernagel. Silvernagel up on the boards to Applegate. He can now. He does get it out. And down comes Silvernagel. Big kid to Silvernagel. But Schwartz intercepts and will bring it back out to center ice. Comes John Schwartz into the zone. Knocked off the puck by Applegate. And Applegate will control. Tries to clear. Can't do so. Doug Terrell with a quick shot that's knocked down nicely by Gosted. Gosted playing an excellent game out there on defense tonight. That's a good through. Oh, out to Doug Terrell. Wide open, a shot. Blocked in front. I believe that was number three that knocked that shot down. Brad Cullen. And now tipped out to center ice. This could be an icing, but the puck won't go far enough, so Doug Terrell gets a hold of it. Skates it back behind his own net. A big... Oh, he tipped it. Luckily, a tip by Girardi as the Royals were almost caught on a line change there. Now the Royals control behind their own net, and they start out intercepted nicely by Huseman. A shot right into the defenseman. Huseman again, just over the net. Only took a sweep at it with his glove, but couldn't get it, and now Rue holds McGannon behind the net, and we'll have a faceoff to the left of goaltender Keeley with 6.06 left in the second period. 42 seconds left in the penalties. Both teams skating four on four here. one nothing Hibbing. Back behind the net. Now that goes Vance Barron with the puck. Intercepted by the Jackets on the far boards. Now John Voss brings it out to center, but it's intercepted. We're going to have a penalty on Voss, I believe. Let's see what the call is here. We have a holding on John Voss from Hopkins. Time of that penalty, 9-09. So John Voss goes for holding, and that puts the Jackets on a power play. So both teams uh, will skate, Hibbing will skate one man short for 27 seconds. Hopkins will skate two men short for 27. Then the Royals will skate for one minute and 33 seconds. 
two man or one man short and the Jackets will be at full strength. I'll get this straightened out sooner or later. So the Jackets have the power play now for a couple of minutes here. Lots of room out on the ice, four on three. Gosted brings it back over to Hardy. Now Hardy up ahead, that's offside. Steve Terrell forgot to hold the blue line there and the puck is ruled offside. Okay, there's the faceoff. Puck comes back into the Hibbing zone. Back to get it is Steve Terrell. Skates around behind his own net. Here he comes out to center. Puts a little move on. And here come the Jackets. Three on two. Terrell all the way in. Now takes it back behind his own net. Nobody to center the puck to. Gets it to Gosted. He couldn't get his shot off. And the puck rolled all the way back to Jacklin. Hibbing is back at full strength. So for 128 now, the Jackets will skate five on four. And could use a goal right here. Held in nicely at the point by Kurt Damon. Jason Schneider bumped off the puck by Steve Terrell. And out the center comes Terrell. Over to Wallers. With Girardi breaking on the near side. Gets it ahead to Girardi. Oh, knocked off his stick at the last second by Holmbeck. Now to Gosted. He'll hold it in down to uh, Wallers. Wallers circling. Now back to Terrell at the point. He can't get a pass in. Terrell gets the puck back after he came off a defenseman. And now number two, Bear will try to clear it out and will clear it all the way down. Back to get it is Gosted. Gosted up to uh, Girardi now, and it's Terrell right in the skates. He'll circle. 42 seconds left on the power play for the Jackets. Bad pass by Terrell, and O'Brien is nailed at the blue line and knocked down. And Terrell will skate it back behind his own net and wind things up. Here they come to center. Pass over to Wollers as the defenseman drop back. Wollers just tips it into the corner. He'll get it himself with Girardi back there to help, and O'Brien. Now back to Hardy. Hardy winds from the near slot, near uh, far faceoff circle, excuse me, and that one went wide and back to get it as Gosted with 12 seconds left in the penalty. So for all intents and purposes, the Hopkins Royals have killed this off. Now Johnny Rue breaks into the Hopkins zone. He battles along the near boards with Bear. Now tips it out in front, nobody home. Defenseman clears it away. Back to the point, Stavnis holds it in. Quick shot, oh, just wide, just rolls wide. Now to the other point, Stavnis will take a shot again. Oh, kicked out again by Keeley. He's been outstanding in the goal tonight for Hopkins. And now Stavnis back in center ice. Jackets try to just dump it in, but it's knocked down by number nine, Silvernagel. Jackets clear back into Hopkins territory. Now bumped out to center ice. Here comes Johnny Rue in with Doug Terrell. And Wollers pass the trail over to Wollers. He slides it in and a beautiful sliding save by Keeley. Couldn't quite get his stick on the puck. Could Wollers and the puck just rolled on net and Keeley made the save. Three minutes and ten seconds left in the second period. Hibbing still leads one to nothing. Now we have a discussion taking place down around the Hopkins goal. Now we'll have a little change made by the Royals as uh, they can put one more man on the ice. I see where the problem was. They didn't have enough guys on the ice. Out on the ice now for Hopkins is Mark Passolt. One of the few times he's been on the ice. Line of Dalton, Gables, and Voss. Passolt is taking Voss's place on the wing, however. Now along the far boards, up to pick it up will be number 20, Dalton. He skates it out to center and dumps it in the hibbing zone. Back to get it is Pescuzzi. Over to Wallers. Wallers nailed with a check along the near boards. And that will be an icing call on the Blue Jackets. One of the few on the Blue Jackets tonight. And with 2.43 left to play, a faceoff comes to the right of goaltender Rich Jacklin. Jackets leading one to nothing. I really expected this to be a high scoring uh, affair tonight, but it has not turned into a high scoring game. Faceoff coming up to the right of goaltender Jacqueline. Puck comes behind the net and Gosted controls. 
Joey Gostad now over in the far boards, held in the point. Shot low along the ice, is knocked down in front, and Hardy clears it back behind his own net. Now over to Gossett, he drops it back to Hardy, who started out, but Johnny Schwartz controls, tries to get out, but he can't. Quick shot by Holmbeck is blocked by Doug Terrell. And now over to the far boards, and Tommy Sullivan picks it up over and held in. Now it's going to be cleared by the Jackets. And here comes Schwartz, one on two. Schwartz with a quick shot, goal! Goaltender came out to cut down the angle, gave Schwartz the far side, and he beat him low to the stick side, and that's the second goal for the Jackets. John Schwartz, time of that goal, 12-49. Johnny Schwartz with the goal. We'll have to wait for the assist on that goal. Beautiful shot from about 15 feet. Schwartz from Sullivan on that goal. Schwartz picked the puck up, came in one-on-one -on -one at the red line, came into the zone, took a shot from the top of the near faceoff circle and beat goaltender Keeley to give the Jackets a two to nothing lead. Now a possible break is averted as Andy O'Brien quickly gets back to break it up. Now Stavnis breaks it up at center ice. Tipped in over the court. Oh, kicked off a defenseman's skates. Gostad controlled it. Puck rolls to Jacqueline. Breaking in was Lindsey Holmbeck. But Jacqueline controls the puck and holds on. We'll have a faceoff to the right of Jacqueline. 138 left in this second period. Hibbing now with a 2 to nothing lead. Puck rolls on, Jacqueline clears it behind the net to Gostad. He tips it to the near side to Wollers. Now another behind the back pass to Gostad. He'll set it up behind his net. Taken away as Gostad waited a little too long. A shot, big stop by Jacqueline. I'm not sure he saw the puck. Huseman back behind to Gostad. Gostad kept the puck a little too long and it was tipped away. Tries to hold it in, doesn't do so, but the referee's allowing to keep playing. That puck definitely came out of the zone. Now the referee in the way of Huseman and finally goes out of play. Puck was not really held in over on the far boards, but the official was in no position to call the play. Therefore, he allowed play to continue. Puck went into the Zamboni area, and we'll have a face-off again to the right of Richie Jacklin. Brian Applegate, Chad Silvernagel, and Griff Gingle are on for the Hopkins Royals, on for the Jackets, Terrell, Sullivan, and Schwartz with Stavnis and Hardy at the defense. One minute left in this second period, Hibbing with a two nothing lead now. Schwartz tries to clear it, can't do so, held in at the point by Applegate. There's a quick shot that is a big save, now comes out front, cleared by the defense. That quick shot coming off the stick of Holmbeck again. Now the Jackets break it to center, Schwartz clears it ahead to Sullivan, then is knocked down, and uh, both players hit the ice, and will tie it up along the near boards with 37 seconds left. 10 saves for Richie Jacklin, eight saves for goaltender Keeley in this period unofficially. Marty Sunval doing the statistics up on the uh, press row up here, although the official stats are supposedly kept down on the ice where it's very, uh, very, very hard to see. And consequently, there's always a difference in opinion on what the saves should be. But Marty Sunval, crack statistician in his own right, Keeping good stats and helping us out up here. There's a steal by O'Brien. He clears it right on Keeley and he makes a save. And players ramble into Keeley and he goes back onto his back and acts as though he may be hurt. Actually was barreled into by his own player there as the Hibbing player skated through the crease. Then he's up though. He seems to be all right. Well, have a face off to the right of Keeley with 27 seconds left in the second period. Coming up shortly, Frank Catani, coach of the Hibbing Community College Cardinals, with a between periods interview at the end of the second period. There's the drop of the puck. Rue, Hibbing's uh, defenseman pinched in, and we almost had a break for the Royals, but Gostad's back, bats it over, but intercepted two on one. There's a quick shot and a save. That shot coming off the stick. I can't see his numbers. Number 22, Todd Dvorak with a little wrist shot. Hibbing's defenseman pinched into the zone and were caught 
snapping as the Hopkins Royals quickly broke it out. 16 seconds now left in the second period. Schneider and Rue to take the face off. Referee lining them up a little bit here. Now comes back to the slot. Shot knocked down in front by Damon. Goes behind to Houston over to Gosted. Hibbing will just try to kill it off now. Dumps it out to center ice and that'll do it. There's a high stick and it is called. So we'll have a face off down, I believe, to the right of the goaltender. Healy with four seconds left, giving Hibbing a chance at a quick goal here. A goal right now in the last four seconds here could really break the spirit of the Hopkins Royals. We'll see what the Jackets come up with as they bring on Steve Terrell now. No, now Terrell's going to come back off the ice. They're over to the talk to Bill Olson. And John Rue will stay on, and off the ice will come Cal Huseman. So the Jackets will go with... They don't have enough people on the... Oh, Hibbing does that. Okay, Schwartz is on also. One defenseman out for the Jackets right now. There's the drop of the puck, and it's cleared into the Hibbing players' box. We'll have a face-off to the top of the circle to the right of the goaltender, Keeley, with one second left as that puck went flying into the Hibbing players' box. There's a drop, and he can't get the shot off quickly enough to Ngoste. That's the end of the second period. Stops in that second period. Both goaltenders with 10 saves in the second period. Jacqueline has 15 for the game. Keeley has 25. The only goal in that second period scored by John Schwartz with an assist from Tom Sullivan at 12.49. The Jackets now lead this game two to nothing. Interview with Frank Catani coming up and then second period action coming up next. Well, both teams have returned to the ice for this all important third period. Hibbing leading his hockey game two to nothing. 16 seconds of the first period, it was John Rue from Paul Girardi giving Hibbing a one nothing lead at the end of the first period. In the second period at the 12.49 mark, Johnny Schwartz scoring. Tom Sullivan with the assist for the two goals for Hibbing. Saved so far uh, through two periods. Keeley for Hopkins has 25 stops, 15 in the first period, 10 in the second. And Jacqueline has 15 stops, 5 in the first and 10 in the second period. Penalties in that second period Hibbing took a penalty Johnny Rue at 256 for elbowing at 736 we had dual minors Pete Wallers from Hibbing and Todd Bear from Hopkins both for holding and then at 909 Hopkins John Voss took a penalty for holding giving the Jackets a, a four on three and a five on four advantage they could not uh, do anything with that advantage but finally put the second tally up on the board at 1249 on the goal by John Schwartz so it should be an interesting third period. Waiting for the teams now to break their huddles. Here come the uh, Jackets and also here come the Royals now. And we're about ready for third period action. Like to thank Frank Catani for taking time out to uh, <coughs> talk to us at the end of that second period. Like to see a lot more people out to see those college hockey games. They play an exciting brand of hockey. January 3rd and 4th. They'll be uh, facing off against the DuPage Illinois Community College Club and Ed DuPage is an excellent hockey team and like Frank said he doesn't know what to expect from them should be a good one well we're underway in the second period the third period and it's in the jacket zone now skating out comes Girardi pass ahead to Rue he can't control it no icing is the icing is now waved off back is Barry tips it to the far boards and out come the Royals now into the zone, they'll pass a little long for Schneider. He gets it behind the Jackets net, clears it right in front. But Girardi controls and tips it out to center to McGannon. McGannon's pass is intercepted. Here comes Girardi on a break. Oh, a puck rolled off his stick. Couldn't quite get to it until it was behind the net. Now he's knocked down by Schneider, and Schneider clears it to the boards. And all the way down, this will be an icing call on the Royals with 14-16 left here in this third period. And the Jackets on top, 2 to nothing.
We're talking right now with Dan Anderson, the uh, sports editor of the Hibbing Daily Tribune. Dan, I expected a little bit more of a high-scoring game. Uh, is that what you expected also? I don't really know, not having seen Hopkins at all, although the, the first period I noticed Hopkins does have a lot of speed, so they're kind of in Hibbing's way. Hibbing's had a little trouble passing the puck. Uh, between periods, I happened to go in the locker room, I was looking for the B-Squad score, and the coaches were telling the boys that they have to, to uh, develop more of a killer instinct. So we'll see how they respond to that kind of coaching. Right, I, I, I kind of expected because of the high flying, both teams uh, with the quickness that they do exhibit, I thought they'd be up and down the ice and uh, be taking advantage of the goaltenders. Jacqueline's played a good game for the Jackets. You remember the last uh, few few minutes of that uh, second period, Jacqueline came up with four or five real good saves. The other under the ice, there were a couple of nice saves too. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to us, Dan. We're back to play. Good luck, uh, and uh, you're doing an excellent job at the paper. Thank you, Steve. Well, the puck comes into the uh, Hopkins zone, and we'll have a delayed offside called, and the faceoff will come out on the Hibbing side of the red line. Dan Anderson, of course, the sports editor at the Hibbing Daily Tribune. And uh, I, I say, I kind of expected a high-scoring game, and uh, so far it hasn't materialized. Dan Dan's always uh, very insightful and uh, been a good friend and a uh, real uh, credit to the community over the past few years with the Hibbing Daily Tribune. Now a play in the jacket zone. Rollers controls and loses a puck behind his own goal. Now Stavnis will control on the far boards and bring it out to center to Steve Terrell. Terrell can't quite control. Knocked back in into the zone comes Gingle. He's knocked off the puck, but Applegate controls, tries to clear, can't do so. And now over to control will be Silvernagel. Silvernagel hammered into the boards by number five, Sunval, and will tie it up down there in the jacket zone. And a faceoff coming to the left of goaltender Rich Jacklin with 13.27 left in this, the third period. Puck is dropped and controlled, pulled down over there was Hardy. He now clears it behind his own goal to Johnny Schwartz. Schwartz drops it back for uh, Gosted. Gosted wasn't quite ready. Now it comes up to the near side to Tom Sullivan. He spins around. Out to Doug Terrell. A lot of passing in the zone, but they finally break it out into the Royal zone. Nice lead for Gostad. He shoots. Oh, goaltender waved his glove at it, but couldn't get it. Luckily, it went wide for the Royals. Otherwise, it could have been a goal. Now a break for the Royals. Two on two. Nice play by Gostad as he poked checked the puck off of the stick of number 16 out there on the ice, Steve Gables. Now number 27 will dump it in. Oh, number 17, excuse me, that's John Voss. Voss has played a good game. He's a big young man. There's a quick shot, toe save, shot, oh, deflected wide. Jacqueline just got the toe on the first save. Second shot went wide. Jacqueline going for the shutout. He's played uh, that we know of. There's an icing call on the Jackets. Jacqueline played against the Royal Hoyt Lakes and won that one, and I don't believe he's played any more games that I know of. I'm, I'm getting the signal that he hasn't, so Jacqueline's 1-0. And uh, going for his second win in his first shutout of the year. That game was a 5-3 win for the Jackets, uh, I believe, in Aurora. And right now it's 2-0, Jacqueline with the shutout. Puck goes back behind the net. Andy O'Brien tries to tip it out, can't do so. Now held in by Tim Gallagher. But Huseman controls and now falling down over here is Girardi as he's tripped over some red paint or something out there and went to the ice. Now puck comes off of Gallagher. And Houston over on the far boards. Now Houston will try to control, tied up by Pat Delaney. And now the puck will come all the way back down the ice and Puck now behind the jacket goal over on the near boards. That's Sunval. Tries to clear it, but can't. Hardy gets it now over to Stavnis behind his own net. Rollers falls down. A lot of people falling out there on the ice tonight. Don't understand that. Jacket's falling everywhere. There's another almost falling down with Steve Terrell. Now Terrell puts a little hit on. He's going to be offside. No, and he cleared it. And actually, Terrell did have the blue line, but the referee, the linesman, rules offside. Terrell looks like he might have maybe twisted his ankle just slightly as he almost fell down in center ice. Ice must be a little chippy tonight because players are falling.
Torello with Sunball and Wollers. And the puck is tipped by Stavnis into the Hibbing players' box. So a face-off again right at the center red line, just inside the Hibbing side of the center red line. On defense for the Jackets, Stavnis and Hardy. <clears throat> Schneider, Damon, and Dvorak out for the uh, Royals. That's their big number one line. The defensive pairing, the number one defensive pair, Todd Bear, number two, and Dan McGann, number eight. Now a pad breakout. Here comes Sunval, but the pass is a little long, and McGannon will control. And now Terrell with a winds and blisters a shot that goes this wide from the blue line. Sunval controlling in the near boards. Tips it out in front. Checked out the play effectively. It was Wollers. He couldn't get his stick on it. Now a nice behind-the-back pass by Damon, and out comes Schneider. Over to Damon. Damon with the shot. And Jacqueline with the save, and he'll hold on. Puck was going wide, but uh, Jacqueline decides to hold on. 10.54 left in this third period. 2-0, having continues to lead. Now Doug Terrell out to face off against number seven, Brian Applegate. Applegate, Silvernagel, and Gengel out on the ice now for the Royals. Puck cleared to the far boards. A shot from the point by Lindsey Holmbeck goes wide and up over the net. Now along the near boards, they crash into the boards, and out comes Doug Terrell. <coughs> Not able to get out with Schwartz. Puck centered right in front. Now the Jack is clear back to the blue line, held in. Holmbeck with the shot. Jacqueline will control again. 10:25. Now the Royals putting on great pressure on the Blue Jackets here as they've slowed down in this third period. Tight checking by the Royals, and uh, <clears throat> they're not out of this game by any means. They're only two goals behind, and two goals is not a lot for a team that can skate like the Royals can. Johnny Ruse line back out on the ice now for the Jackets to face off against Mike Dalton, Steve Gables, and John Voss for the Royals. Now well, Jackets try to skate it out. Can't quite get it out. Now O'Brien does. Ahead to Girardi. Girardi breaking in. Goes around his man on the near boards. Sending it out front. Nobody home as O'Brien can get the puck. And back come the Royals. This is John Voss. Three on three. Quick shot goes wide. Jacqueline gets dumped. Loses his goal stick. Jackets better clear the zone. He doesn't have a goal stick. Now Jacqueline will pick it up. Try to pick it up, but he can't pick it up. Jackets are going to have to clear the zone here. Now it's dumped down to the near zone. Back behind the net is Pescuzzi. Now number 12, uh, Hibbing players lost. He handed his stick. Stavnis alertly hands his stick to Richie Jacklin. Now Jacklin's goal stick is pushed to him, but he still can't pick it up. Now Girardi will skate it out to center ice and dumped it and pulled down. And we won't have a call. I don't believe it. We didn't have a call on that play. The officials... Uh, Letting a lot go. Jacklin now at least has his goal stick back. Can't believe there was no tripping call on that play there as he had broken in between two defensemen. Now it's up ahead to Stevie Terrell. Steve over to Wollers. A shot. Big stop by Keeley. Keeley. Now Wollers over in the near boards. Crashes into number 23, Passel. Royals bring it out the near side. Here comes number 41. That's... Tim Gallagher getting a little more ice time here in the third period than the rest of the game. Cleared in the hibbing zone. Now back out to center ice, and out comes Pat Delaney. We have a line of Delaney, Passolt, and Gallagher on the ice, a fourth line, and held on nicely by Jacqueline. Jacqueline's been busy in this period, played for a while without his goalie stick there, but a fourth line out on the ice for uh, the Jackets, or for the Royals, and now they'll come off and... That first line comes back out with Schneider, Damon, and Dvorak. Well, so far in this period, three saves for Jacqueline, two saves for Keeley. Unofficially, as Marty uh, Sunball again, uh, the keeper of the stats up on the booth, helps out on the only game in town telecast, broadcast. I guess we're telecasting, they're broadcasting. Now a pile up in the zone comes out to the point. Marty also, I just uh, was told, helps out with the Hibbing Daily Tribune also. 
No, the puck in the jacket zone, knocked down by Sullivan. And there'll be a hand pass on Tom Sullivan. As he didn't quite control it and picking it up was Doug Terrell. So uh, Jackets again in trouble here as they have a faceoff to the left of goaltender Jacklin. No, puck goes behind the North, uh, the North Stars. That's good. Giving <laughs> nets. And over to Johnny uh, Schwartz. North Stars played an excellent hockey game last night against Winnipeg. Looked awesome in that second period. And uh, now we got some pushing and shoving in front of the net as Jacqueline again holds on. 8.09 left. The game has slowed down considerably here as the uh, Jacqueline continues to hold on to the puck. Jeff Nordvold, our audio uh, technician for tonight's uh, hockey telecast. Uh, I'd like to thank Jeff for helping out. For skeletal crew, we're going with one camera tonight because of the holidays. So Jeff uh, offered to help us out, and he's a good young man. He is a, a future broadcaster in his own right. Puck held in. I don't think it is. Referee wanted to blow it, put his whistle in his mouth, and then did not blow it. I don't understand this. I don't know where they found these two referees, but let's start looking a little harder for officials here. I realize it's the holidays, but... That was just downright ridiculous. That puck did not stay in the zone. Now out to center ice comes Andy O'Brien. He's checked off the puck at center ice. Now Hardy dumps it into the zone, and it goes around behind the Royals' net. These officials have been off base all night long. Now a shot. Stavnis attempts to take a shot. He's ridden off the puck. Now it's right in the slot to Girardi. A quick shot. Rebound shot. Still in front. Tied up. Nobody home, and now the Royals will break it out. Silvernagel gets it up ahead, too. That's number eight, McGinn, and, and we're going to have a... Now we get a penalty on the Jackets. That, you know, that figures, I guess. Penalty coming up to number eight, Paul Girardi. Time of that penalty, 7.50, 7.48. Slashing penalty on Girardi. Oh. And we have a timeout called now by the Royals. So we have a little break here. Uh, I don't know where they found. I, I, you know, I hate to be an official baiter, and I hate to be a criticizer because I'm up there and they're down there. But these two officials just have not been on top of the game tonight, and it's, been, it's, it's unfortunate to see that happen. Uh, referee actually put the whistle in his mouth and then refused to blow the whistle on the obvious offside. That's about the third one they've missed tonight, so... I've said enough. That's enough said. Let's get back to the game here after this timeout. Well, the timeout play is back in now. Take this face off for the uh, Jackets as they will play shorthanded. Will be Steve Terrell. He's out there with Houston Wollers. A oh, quick shot, big stop. Gosted out also, and Gosted clears it all the way down. Very quiet crowd in the arena tonight. Not a lot of excitement in this hockey game. Now the Jackets control in the Royal Zone, and Wollers is going to skate it all the way down. Now he backhands it up ahead to Terrell, and Terrell just dumps it. And number two, Bear takes a run at Terrell. He's told during that timeout that the officials are from Nashwalk, Greenway, and Grand Rapids. So local boys, but they're just not, uh, not efficient tonight. Now play in the jacket zone. And coming out to center ice is Pete Wollers. Wollers glides to center ice, gets it in the zone. Hibbing still shorthanded, drops it back. Nobody home. And Damon comes back to center ice. Two on two with Dvorak. 
Damon tries to beat Gostad. Gostad forced him to the outside. Now back to the point of and over to Bear. Bear with a shot that goes away wide. Held in over there on the far boards by Damon. He gets it back out to the blue line to Bear. Almost came out of the zone. Now Dvorak into the front. Tipped away nicely by Terrell in front. And now Terrell will skate it, try to skate it out. He's knocked down and held in by Bear. Now Jason Schneider with a shot. Rebound comes out. Goes around behind the net. Gostad with it. He tries to clear it. Can't do so. Schneider holding it in as the Royals putting on tremendous pressure. Now back to the point. And uh, Schneider at the top of the faceoff circle. Big block by Gostad. Wasn't sure where the puck went to. And now Terrell tries to clear it out, but he can't. He tried to skate it instead of clear it. Shot by Schneider. Goes up over the net. Royals putting on intense pressure. I think Gostad hurt himself when he blocked that shot. That's not Gostad, that's Wallers. There's Gostad going down and blocking one. Terrell slides, trying to get the puck out. Now they'll hold it at the blue line. And we'll have a faceoff with four seconds left in the Hibbing penalty. 5-16 left in this hockey game. In at least the third period, Terrell gets up slowly. Big, intense pressure put on by the Royals here during this power play. But the Jackets have been equal. On now for the Royals, Applegate, Silvernagel, and Gengel. For the Jackets, Doug Terrell, Schwartz, Hardy, and uh, Tom Piscuzzi. Now kicked out to center by Terrell. That'll kill the penalty. Jackets now back at full strength. Girardi steals, but back to cover up was Holmbeck. Now Doug Terrell in the zone. Girardi skates it to the corner, looking for somebody in the slot. Drops it back to the point to Hardy. Whistles a drive wide. Over at the far point, Piscuzzi walks in. Whistles a shot, comes off the defenseman. And now back to center ice comes three, two on three. The Royals now picked off by Hardy. One on two comes Schwartz. Schwartz breaks through. Oh, if he could have got a pass back in the, cre in the crease all alone with Tom Sullivan. Now over to the other point. Pescuzzi puts a weak shot on. Same thing. Oh! Just sliding it in was Doug Terrell. Fulton to Keeley came about five feet outside his crease. Got tied up with a slew of hockey players. Not much of a shot by Doug Terrell. But it slid past the goaltender time of that goal 10 minutes and 23 seconds and that should do it for the jackets here as they take a three to nothing lead on a goal by number 17 doug terrell terrell just slid the puck by the goaltender play now in center ice wait to get the assist here hardy gets one assist Goal! And Pascuzzi got the other assist. A shot from the faceoff circle. Beats the goaltender again to the far side. Keeley. And Hibbing is now on top. Four to nothing. Time of that goal. 10.35. So just 12 seconds after the fact. Hibbing with their fourth goal. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure who took that shot. John Wu with the goal. His second of the game. Girardi with an assist. And O'Brien gets the other assist. It's Girardi's second assist of the game. And it's now four to nothing for the Jackets. 4-14 left in this third period. As Hibbing has exploded for two goals in 12 seconds. Now Girardi controlling, bringing out to center ice. Over to O'Brien, puck comes off O'Brien's stick into the Royal zone. Clearing it high off the boards. Now rolls along the dasher. Off a defenseman held in. Oh, a big hit. That's going to be a penalty on the Royals. A high stick on number 17, John Voss. I believe it'll be a high stick. I would hope it would be a high stick call, but we'll have to wait for the official to see. got him. Yes, it's going to be a penalty on John Voss. Voss had gone to the penalty box while the official checked the injured blue jacket out. Cross-checking looks to be the call. Time of that penalty. 11 minutes. 11 minutes and 6 seconds. So now the... Uh, Jackets will have the power play. 
comes out to the blue line, held in. Girardi back to Steve Terrell. Cross-checking is the call. That's Wellers dropping it back for O'Brien. I think it's O'Brien. Yeah, it was Girardi, actually. Now Terrell holds it in. Schwartz with a shot knocked out right in front. Wellers scores right between the goaltender's legs. And a power play goal for Wellers. Time of that goal, 11-29. Pete Waller standing all alone in front of the net. Just found the eight hole right between the goaltender's legs. And Hibbing has broken open this hockey game, a power play goal, as they now lead five to nothing. Waiting for the call on that goal. It was Pete Waller's. See who gets the assist here. Oh, a quick shot. Jacqueline with the save. Schwartz gets the assist. 11.29, the time of the goal. Jackets up 5 nothing. Now it's time to preserve the shadow for Jacqueline. Jackets clear from in front of the net. Oh, quickly. Nice blocking stop by number nine. Troy Dilla now in the goal. Shot. Big stop by Keeley as in on goal was number 18, Danny Kastner. Big stop. So now John Schwartz with that assist on the Rollers goal has a goal and an assist tonight. And Pete Rollers picks up his first goal of the game. Now back to Schwartz over to the point. Pescuzzi with a shot does wind up getting through somehow. Doug Terrell holds it in. There's a shot by Sullivan that rolls wide. Doug Terrell on the other side, back to the point, tipped in towards the net. Schwartz can't quite control as he battles Todd Bear. Now Schwartz goes down, and the puck, try, they try to skate out. They will now skate out to center ice. Kurt Damon with the puck as the Royals have slowed down considerably now as we're under three minutes, and they realize that it's a 5 nothing hockey game, and they stand little chance of coming back in this one. Now Pescuzzi, puck flies over his head down to the hibbing zone. Pescuzzi battles it in there, banged into the boards hard, battles to get it out. And here comes Doug Terrell. Terrell, oh, defenseman almost fell down. Oh, set it right in front. No, Pes that's Tom Sullivan with a shot, and it's fallen on. It's the defenseman laying in front of him. Keeley had it. If he hadn't have picked it up, Todd Bear, number two, would have. In fact, Bear flips it to the official. 2.08 left in this, the third period. Five to nothing, Blue Jackets with a big, big lead. As they broke this one open with three goals. 10-23, Doug Terrell scored. 10-35, just 12 seconds later, Johnny Rue scores. And at the 11-29 mark, Pete Wallers. So that's two goals, three goals in one minute and six seconds. Nice job by the Jackets here in the third period. Now they bang at it in front. Now the hipping players finally cleared away and the puck comes loose. Stanger all alone in front to bang at the puck with Stavnis. Couldn't quite get it past Keeley, however. Now into the zone comes Steve Terrell. Terrell trying to center, does so. Knocked down in front. We got an interference penalty, I believe, coming up. He's got to check the number now. Hibbing player is down. That's Gosted, I believe, or Wollers. It's Gosted. And the penalty will come up to Hopkins. Time of that penalty, 13-15. That's number four taking that penalty, Lindsey Holmbeck. Didn't see uh, what the it was for. To call it tripping. As he knocked the hitting player down in front of the net. Could have been interference also, but 13-15 the time of the goal. Now the Jackets control again. Here's Hardy over to the other point to Stavnes. He walks in, takes a little wrist shot. The blocker puts the puck wide. Now it's in somebody's uniform and finally drops out of Doug Terrell's uniform. Stops so far in this period unofficially from Marty Sunvall. 12 for Keeley and five for Rich Jacklin. Jacklin had his five stops early in the period but he's been relatively uh, untested now late 
as the Jackets have really put on exhibition. Now giving the puck up, Mike Dalton controls. He's knocked out the side of the Jackets net. And now up to pick it up is Doug Terrell, and he'll skate it out to center on the power play. Gets it over to John Rue with Andy O'Brien on the near side. Rue hammered into the boards over there. Doug Terrell will go back to get it. Hardy out here at the point holds it in. Tips it down the corner to... Can't see that number. Must be uh, number six, O'Brien, I believe. Yes, it is. Now Doug Terrell behind the net. Should probably get back to the point, which he does to Stavnis. Last minute of the period. Last minute of the game. Quick shot, Doug Terrell. Goalie Keeley got his glove on it. Goes wide into the corner. Terrell over to Stavnis on the near side now. Back to Terrell. He can't get it. We've got a break. This is number 16 coming down. That's Steve Gables. Shot, big stop. And holding on is Richie Jacklin as he falls on the puck to preserve his shutout, which has 40 seconds left in this hockey game. And now the fans are starting to leave in a mass exodus as they realize this one's over. But Richie Jacklin is going for that shutout right now. And well, the faceoff to the left of Jacklin with 50, 40 seconds left, 55 seconds left in the penalty. So barring a hipping goal, the Hopkins Royals will skate the rest of this period short-handed. Now up the center ice. Defenseman fell down. Here comes number 18, Kasner. Shot goes wide. Wicked shot from Kasner. Now held in at the point. Shot and held on. Shot from Gosted. And holding on to the puck is goaltender Keeley with 27 seconds left to play. The Hopkins Royals uh, take on the Virginia Blue Devils tomorrow night. And, uh, uh, you know, I'd have to say Hopkins would be favored now if they don't get two shell shots from this one because this has been an explosion here by the Jackets in the third period. Face-off puck balls behind Keeley. Now bounce off the boys to the far side. Controlling over there is number nine, Dilla, with 20 seconds to play. Now back behind the nets, Kasner. Kasner off, and we're going to have penalties, I believe, here. Well, he waved at one. I don't know if he's got one or two. Coming off the ice will be number two, Todd Bayer. Kind of a frustration penalty on Bayer for the Hopkins Royals. Four holding. Time of that penalty, 14.45. Puck is dropped now. <clears throat> Gostad will hold it in the zone. Now the Royals will shoot all the way down with seven seconds to play. That should do it for this hockey game. Three seconds, two, one. That'll do it. Big explosion by the Jackets here in this third period. And they go on. Richie Jacklin with the shadow for the Jackets. Five nothing Hibbing. Stops in that period. Six for Jacklin. Eleven for Keeley. 36 to 26 for Jacklin with 26 saves. Keeley with 36. Quickly recapping that third period. 10-23, Doug Terrell from Hardy and Pascuzzi. Just 12 seconds later at 10-35, John Rue from Girardi and O'Brien. Closing out the scoring in that period at 11.29. That's three goals in one minute and six seconds. Pete Wollers from John Schwartz. And the Jackets skate away with a hard-fought 5-0 victory over the Hopkins Royals.